All right, we'll try to try to keep this one brief. Let me change this up. Dark theme. There we go. So uh, let's switch this over. I don't know why this thing keeps always hollow candlesticks. Um, so in my previous video, I talked about uh, that the market was going to hit 18K. We were going to test 18K. We subsequently did. We came as low as 18,200, right? And that was because if you look at the... Right, you look at the, we're looking at the Dow. Uh, if you look at the Dow on the, uh, on the on the on the weekly, you can see that the the biggest support that the market was going to have was going to be at the 18k mark. You should be able to see that right here for the better part of a couple of years, um, from 2014, 15, 16, all the way up until uh, almost November, November of 16, the market had a hard time breaking above that 18k mark, and subsequently we rallied. You see the market kind of stalled similarly here at the 27k mark. Uh, we subsequently rallied and then of course sold off. And then in, in the other videos that I had talked about, that the market was going to test uh, 22k, 20k, and then subsequently test 18k, which we have. So the update for the week, for those wondering where the market uh, is looking to go, um, just looking at the numbers, so what we're witnessing, right, is the exponential growth, right? In the U.S., we now have 136,000 cases. It took us a few days to get the testing done, and it took us a couple of days to break past um, Italy. But as you can see, also Italy uh, coming in at a close second. Uh, but, of course, no one will rival America because we are number one. Always got to be number one. And so what you're seeing is exponential growth, right? So I know... A lot of people have talked about like dividend accounts and, um, you know, as those dividends start to accrue, you start to what what refer to as compound compounding. Right. And so as time goes by, you know, that initial amount due to compounding over years start to grow. Well, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. Right. The compounding of uh, people coming in contact with one another. People aren't obeying, obeying quarantines and they're going out and going to the beaches, et cetera, right? They're going to the beaches, they're going to parks. I mean, here in New York City, on any given day when I'm on my way to the hospital, I take the express bus going uptown and I'll see people kind of walking about, people with their girlfriends. I see uh, uh, moms with their kids, like literally, you know, playing on the street. I was watching, it was like whole crowd, whole, whole streets were, were fairly crowded for what should be many people who are home isolating themselves. And so what happens is you come in contact with many other individuals. And of course it exponentially increases the growth on my way up. I saw kids playing on the basketball courts. I passed through Harlem on the bus and I see, you know, most of those projects have like little playgrounds. I see the parade as I'm drive as I'm, I'm going in the bus uptown, I see the playgrounds, you know, packed with parents and their children playing. When I get into the Bronx, um, I see the exact same thing. I see on the highway there, uh, on the, I think it was the cross Bronx. I forget what it is. Um, there's a basketball courts and the basketball courts are, are filled with, you know, young black Hispanic kids, um, playing, playing basketball. Cause it was nice. It was nice the other day. It was nice on Friday. And then I get off the bus, I'm walking towards the hospital. What do I see? I see crowds um on the street so i have to actually you know grab my n95 because there's so many people um that i have to protect myself so i can wear a surgical mask but i'm better off with an n95 same thing when i took the um when i took the train I took the train home this morning and it's a very a very crowded crowded train um on a sunday that should be fairly dead but there were still maybe there were essential workers i'm not quite sure um, but there were still quite a few people some had masks not everybody but i'm starting to see more people uh wearing masks whether they're like home health aides going to work etc and so what we're going to see over the next couple of days where it took us really uh, quite a few days to get over uh, that 100k mark and then boom we're already uh, 36,000 over the 100k mark and that's exponential growth right that's what that's what we're witnessing we're witnessing the exponential growth within the united states in the past 24 hours we have confirmed 20,000 cases the previous day was like 194 i believe and now we're at 20,000 so as america starts to ramp up what they're going to realize is they're going to have to have tighter tighter knit quarantine areas where the areas that are harder hit or like the president kind of said that they were going to uh 
that they were basically going to quarantine, you know, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. And they were, and you know, Cuomo was like, "Well, I don't know how they're going to do that. That sounds like, uh, you know, the federal government waging a war on on the states." But uh, unfortunately, what we're seeing is not a lot of people are being are being the quarantines in the ICU where I worked at last night. There were several young people, 23, 25, 28, who were on ventilators. Um, and these are patients with no medical history. And a lot of the patients that have been coming in um, are what you would expect to be much healthier. But in terms of the market, once the market, of course, gets wind of this, we're going to see a subsequent retest, right? So like I said, 22K was um, the resistance on the way up because it was the 22K mark that we held on the way down. We tested 22 and then subsequently fell off. We tested 18 and now the market is bouncing. The market is bouncing back. Looking at the on the 15 minute chart, you'll see the market hit 22K and they came over again. We hit a 22K again and subsequently sold off. So especially uh, with the coming days, I'm looking for the market to kind of retest, uh, make our way back down towards towards that 18K mark. And of course, if we break 18K, the next support for the market is going to be 16K. So if the market breaks 18K, more than likely it'll be on a gap down day. It'll more likely gap down and then trade up to 18K and then we'll start to sell off. If we do, we'll test 16K for sure. Um, that's just the next area of support looking at the market. Um, it's going to be around 16 K. We could even test 15 K. Um, and we're not even kind of through like the recession. People were calling the bear market. Like, is the bear market over? It's like, no, the bear market's just getting started. And so for me, like for me, I'm, I'm an N1 portfolio holder. I, I put in about 4,800. I still got another, um, 450 here. I'm going to put some more money in. Um, this week, because I'm trying to put in like a thousand every week, so we're down about twenty five, maybe twenty eight percent. And that was because most of the money was put in, as you can see here. Most of that was put in um, well before the market uh, turned south, uh, and then I've subsequently just waited for the big pullbacks. I put a little bit in. I'm at twenty two k. I put a little bit at twenty k, and I put a little bit in again um, at the eighteen k mark. So I know the market's going to trade a little bit lower, which is why I'm, I was hold, I'm holding on to this cash. I wish I would have had the opportunity to put that in, but I've been kind of like putting money away just in case something, you know, things get really, really bad. And for whatever reason, um, you know, nursing, working in the field becomes too dangerous. Um, like, like we subsequently mm -hmm. saw, um, I think it's at the Mount Sinai, I think it was at Mount Sinai Hospital here in the city. Um, where the nurses were using garbage bags. They were using black garbage bags to protect themselves. And of course, that is not adequate uh, personal protective equipment. And so a very young nurse ended up becoming overly exposed and died. Um, and so it's obviously not, or, you know, if people aren't going to obey quarantine, it makes it real hard. Um, you know, we're seeing people call out like short every single day. I'm normally not an ICU nurse and I went to work yesterday and they were like, Hey, we need you to come into the ICU. I normally work um, in the medical step down, which is more like the overflow. When ICU gets full, they'll step these, they'll step these patients down to take care of more critical patients. Not that the patients that we get don't necessarily um, don't need ICU. Sometimes people have to get released prematurely and, you know, we've got to manage them as close as we can. Um, but unfortunately, so we ended up getting, I ended up getting pulled into the ICU. I'm sure I will probably get pulled in again tonight. Um, and it, we're, and we're literally just getting started. America looking like we're going to hit the 1 million confirmed cases, probably in about 10 to 12 days because we're, we're doubling, we're doubling just about every three days. Right. And so as you saw really quickly, we were at the 100K and we're already at the 136 the following, the following day. So probably by, my, by Monday when the testing starts getting, you know, ramped up, um, you're going to see this is going to, we're probably going to hit <clears throat> like the 150, 160, <coughs> excuse me, and then be closer to that 200K by like Monday, Tuesday, which means that by, by about Friday, Maybe by about Friday, we'll be at the 400,000, 400,000 confirmed cases um, because of the doubling effect, because of the exponential growth. 
Um, and I do really do encourage you if you don't have to come out of your home, you know, outside of checking on family members or, you know, buying food or medic or medicine at home or, you know, doing things that may be more essential. Or of course, if you are an essential, essential employee, whether you're, you know, a police officer, a fire, an ambulance, et cetera, then of course, you know, we have to go to work. Um, but of course, use something to protect, you know, your eyes, nose, and mouth. Um, and of course, use, you know, hand sanitizer. If you have hand sanitizer at home, I always have some here. Um, do your best to keep your, you know, your hands clean. Don't touch your face. You don't, don't touch your eyes, nose, and mouth, etc. Without, you know, with hands that are not clean. Do your best to avoid people who are sick. If someone, if you, when your family becomes sick, be, be sure to isolate that person um, right away. Um, even with my clothing that I utilize with my scrubs, as soon as I come home, I put my shoes in a bag. Um, I hang my jacket up so it's kind of like not exposed um, to the rest of my clothing and then i immediately wash uh, my my scrubs uh, right afterwards i wash i wash my scrubs right away instead of having that stuff in in the home because the laundromats are closed i can't do my laundry so i have to wash everything you know in the sink or in the in, in the tub um so i just make sure i just wash everything and so as we and we're, and we're not even talking about the effects of the coronavirus in terms of the long-term unemployment that is going to happen the uh, the habits of the american people that were that will change were like who's going to be going on cruises right who's going to be who's going to be in the next couple of months going to be ready to jump on a plane to go to another country um or who's going to be wanting to go to a crowded gym right so some people will i don't i don't doubt that but by and large many people will be more hesitant about going into crowded areas is just because our human behavior will change and this of course will have a, 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 an effect on the market it will cause the market to settle on a lower to settle at a lower value and eventually the market may ramp up seeing a lot more companies um will might more than likely pull their dividends or lower their dividends um so this is a good opportunity for both growth and long-term dividend if you're looking um, to get into stocks, you know, we can check out my holdings. Between the bonds, FLO, I do like. EPD, very hesitant when it comes to oil. Enbridge, Iron Mountain, um, things like Foot Locker may rebound. CCL was a bit of a waste of money, but thankfully it wasn't, you know, thankfully it wasn't too much money. Um, I, I prematurely got into CCL and I've subsequently lowered my I think it's like 1% now. I think it was 5% and I was putting a little bit too much money in. And as you can see, paying the penalty along with many other people who thought it was really cheap. I was getting in at like 18, 19. I think the stock is like 14 now. Yeah. I think the stock's like 14. Um, 3M, very de decent company. I think it will pull back. Um, I do like things like Kellogg. I'm very leery about um, the banking stocks with the coming um, housing market collapse, which of course will affect um, REITs, right? Like LTC is one of them and Ladder, like Ladder is another company. I think things like T-Mobile, um, T-Mobile, look. if, if T-Mobile actually came down to about 21 or so, I think it would actually be a fairly good, um, fairly good value. I'm not too sure. I, I kind of backed off away a little bit from uh, retail um, and do you like Verizon? Put a little bit of money into Ford, but not quite sure how Ford is going to work out. Caterpillar, I am liking as Caterpillar had a huge pullbacks. Um, Microsoft, so some, kind of more of the staples. You, if Disney is going to be very hard hit um, because of the closures of all their parks, no, nobody's going to be going to a crowded Disneyland anytime soon. So a lot of their money is going to, they're going to have to put out some good movies. Um, and of course, with their streaming. And hopefully they'll be able to offer some value to um, to their shareholders. With that said, um, I do have to get ready for work. It's already after five. I got to see where I'm going to be if I'm leaving the ICU tonight. Um, see if I can do another one of these tomorrow. I might be off tomorrow. I might do some overtime tomorrow. We'll have to wait and see. Hope you guys are out there staying safe. Take care. Thanks for watching. God bless.